but even the people that could come to the meet and greets, not all of them come because they were working at the time during the day. Some would come and then they would Skype in their buddies that were on, you know, whatever they're on the outskirts uh, doing uh, guard patrol or whatever. And so you could see where they would come and get stuff signed for their friends or um, other soldiers that couldn't make it. And you really saw sort of the, the uh, selflessness that they are, you know, it's ingrained in them, I think, because of the service. And, um, yeah, you know, you, 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 it makes you want to step up and um, do more and be more than, you know, do all you can really. And so it was a really great experience um, over those three days. They also went out of their way. I mean, we were there ostensibly to celebrate Batman, kind of show them a good time, bring Comic-Con to them, but they really stepped it up. They were incredible hosts. Every stop, they, they showed us like different things that they worked on, whether it was like canine patrol, or uh, Signal Corps or uh, uh, avionics and stuff. So a lot of different things were, they went out of their way to kind of show us a great time. And so uh, it was really hard one. I definitely do it again in a hurry. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, so Jim, with uh, the X-Men, your 90s run of the X-Men, you and uh, Claremont uh, being about 30 years old now, uh, do you have any, I know Claremont left after like the fourth issue or something. Sure you continue to inspire all of the 90s uh, artistically for the, the look of the X-Men. Yeah. Is there any uh, urge to get back to that, to do like a, a reunion? Uh, we're all, yeah, <laughs> sure. we're all like, you know. Are you waiting? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, you guys are so patient, I have to say. Thank you for uh, indulging me as I go through this crazy journey. I'll tell you that uh, there's definitely parts of it that I miss, you know, but it's, you know, memories are always positive, right? You never remember like the hardships or like how hard it was. Um, I, I think the only drawback to going back and revisiting such, you know, beloved characters and comics that people really hold with such fondness is that you, you would disappoint them, right? That you would go and they'd go like, oh, he came back and this is what we got, right? So, um, but I, that doesn't really hold me back too much. I think that would be the challenge, right? Is to go there and, and do it better the second time around. Um, but, you know, I'm knee deep in a contract with DC. They treat me super well. I love working there. So, you know, it, it, I, it's not something I see. Well, know. if they go under in a year, we'll see you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> There's my backup plan. You got it. There you go. Oh my God, there's a guy betting on the line now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't hold your breath, sir, man. Don't hold your breath. You can hold it for a while. <laughs> you back there, sir. Yeah, uh, so a quick question. So, I know a lot of artists these days are going digital. Do you foresee kind of continuing? Yeah, I, I still draw on paper, and um, I, you know, I had Cintiq, and I had the iPad Pro, and all that. I, I just, uh, I just prefer drawing on paper. It's what I grew up with. That's how I've always defined art. Uh, when I'm on a computer, it feels like work, it, even if I'm drawing. I feel like I'm, but I do like color corrections, or I'll do design work where I have the simple base, and then I can move things and change things back very, very quickly. Whereas if I was working analog, I'd have to erase, white out, redraw, like, you know, it, it gets, I can do a lot more variations in Photoshop, right? Um, and then I also will do like color work. I'm not a great painter, so I like the idea of kind of experimenting with colors and, and, and seeing what happens when I add this color to this color. Um, so again, you can, you know, man see your mistakes, right? So. Um, but also, I don't really, you know, and I understand that it's faster, like new artists feel like it's faster working digitally, but you also don't have your, an original. And you know, there's value still in, in original art, and so I feel like there's a missed opportunity to, for uh, some of them. Thank you. Sir, uh, back okay. again. Um, I, I just have a question. What inspired you to like switch string your art? So um, one other thing I say is that there's also a real um, visceral love I have of kind of getting ink on my hands and smearing stuff and ha having happy accidents sort of happen on, on paper. Um, it's a very you you are creating like literally creating art like with your bare hands, right? So I thought about like that a lot too. So Twitch is the other thing, right? So so creating art is one thing. So Twitch is about uh, it's, it's, it's a live streaming platform for those of you guys who don't know. Basically, I have a camera set up on my drawing table, 
headphones and people would log in and watch me draw and then could can communicate with me via chat. And uh, to me, it was trying to replicate a little of what happens here when I have a table yeah. and, and, and a pencil. Uh, I used to do panels, I, I would do Q&A and draw, and then I would give the artwork away to someone in the audience. And um, so that's why I kind of used as the basis of my screen. But it was really great. I, I, I formed friendships with a lot of people that are online and I think it gives them insight to what I do in a way that no other platform could. So I actually drew a page of Action 1000 on live on stream. Uh, I, think, I think I started like 11 o'clock at night, I finished like five or six in the morning. So there were people kind of coming in and out of that stream all night long in Europe, Asia, US. And, uh, get, and, and that stream, all right, most of my streams are about two, two hours, two to three hours, but that stream, which is like six hours, has like five times as many views as the others because I think people don't understand what it takes to draw a finished page of art and to see it go from you know, a blank sheet of paper with a description on, on typewritten on a piece of paper and then me explaining the process as I create the art, it's not something that, it's like literally being that fly on the, and the, on the wall in my studio when I create a page of art something that is really hard to express without watching it being done. Yeah. So so I like sharing that information. So you know I do it when I can at this point. And so yeah if you haven't hopped up go to twitch.tv slash Jim Lee. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah so it's pretty it's a pretty cool way of uh, you taking advantage of technology and it's uh, for you you know in the process not too intrusive I think it's a couple cameras and, uh, and a microphone. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, you take that one single moment and spread it out to the entire world. It's pretty, pretty awesome. And then it's fairly interactive, and we went for weeks, like where I drew characters I've never drawn before, from Goku to um, Strife, you know, to or Cloud Strife, to just like random, like uh, Patrick the Starfish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so like. I'm like Googling all the stuff and I yeah. just draw it for the first time and just try to make it look like something I would have drawn in my style, but still recognizably that character, right? So, yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't you tune into that? That's, uh, that's, that's better than any Game of Thrones. Uh, <laughs> that's right. For a fraction of the budget. Yeah, 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 don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Sir? What was your favorite run? Oh, oh, oh. Favorite run? Your favorite run. Like, a Physical, like, uh, or, uh, of comics? Yeah. I would have to say it's um, the uh, X-Men from, like, uh, the John Byrne, Chris Claremont run. Uh, like, from, uh, well, it's not, it's Dave Cochran, too. So probably from, like, X-Men 97 to 121 or something like that, which is, uh, it was like the X-Men on the run. They just were, they went from one adventure to the other. Um, they went into outer space. They, no, they took on the Sentinels. They went into outer space. They come crashing down, crashing, like, crashing down to Earth in a space shuttle. Jean becomes Dark, or becomes Phoenix, and then she becomes Dark Phoenix. They go to Ireland. I mean, it was crazy. Like, ev like it was nonstop uh, in terms of the story, and that just had me so transfixed as, you know, as a fan. And um, uh, it's some, it's actually kind of the basis for my run. On the X Men, I wanted to keep that kind of frenetic pace of, of storytelling and not knowing where what was going to happen the next issue, and then moving the X Men from location to location and having them kind of just run into all these different types of villains and situations. Um, very different than a team that just kind of sits at home and patrols the city looking for you know crime to, to avenge or, or stop. Right. So um, that really is kind of defined you know those characters for. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, <laughs> uh, you. Let's go. You back there. Okay. Um, yeah, you. Are there any um, any upcoming artists and or writers that have inspired that stuff to you? You know, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll plug a little like what we're doing on, on the young adult line. So we're, we we're, we're doing a few less like horror superhero comics, and we've launched this. DC for Young Reader line, uh, it's called Zoom and Ink. Um, but there's one that's coming out called Raven, uh, a woman named Cammie Gar uh, 
Garcia, who um, uh, comes from the world of YA. She's, uh, you know, our strategy was to bring in a lot of big name writers from that world and pair them up with comic book artists or creators or artists. And in this instance, it's uh, Gabriel Piccolo, who's, you know, kind of a phenomenon online. He's, he's got a huge Instagram following, uh, very young Brazilian artist. And that's garnered a lot of attention and um, a tremendous number of views online for the trailer that we put up. And that's exciting to me that, that we're creating really kind of a, a very exciting project using talent that aren't normally big names in our sort of core business, right? And I think that's kind of what we need to keep growing this business so that we're not just selling comics to the same group of people that we are trying to branch out and bring in new audiences, new readers that know who these characters are, um, but aren't necessarily buying and reading comics. So this graphic novel called Raven um, is the first of many that Pam is gonna do, and I'm just super excited to see what that will result in and the attention and, and sales that we'll get because of that. And that was like really the driving force behind this entire line is that like, we know that there are people out there that want to read, they love these characters, but aren't going to comic book shops. How do we get them into sort of this ecosystem of comics so that they become fans and, and so that we can continue?